now you've probably heard of Bitcoin. Everybody's talking about Bitcoin. 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 And possibly heard of other terms like blockchain or cryptocurrency. 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 Blockchain. Blockchain. Turnover chain. Turnover chain. Sorry about that. That has nothing to do with this with this video. So my swag gets the best of me sometimes. I, I apologize. However, the turnover chain and Bitcoin do have something loosely in common. In 2017, they both took off and exploded in popularity. Now, Bitcoin was introduced in 2009 and it's been growing ever since then, but 2017 is when they both took the nation by storm. Some of you guys may already be invested or trading cryptocurrency as well, and some of you all just may be interested in what this new phenomenon is all about. Now, I want to call a timeout real quick, and I want to say really quick up front and let you guys know, this is not going to be a video explaining or describing what Bitcoin is or talking about Bitcoin per se, the digital currency. This video is strictly about the psychology behind what's going on as far as people's involvement with Bitcoin and socially what's going on psychologically and how we can understand the behavior with people that are involved with Bitcoin or how we're talking about it and interacting with it. By no means is this a video talking about or explaining or describing what cryptocurrency is, what Bitcoin is, none of that. There are plenty of videos, great videos out there that you can find and a ton of information that you can find on that if that's what you're interested in. But that is not my expertise. The most I'll say about Bitcoin is this. Bitcoin is the name of a digital currency, a cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is a digital money. It's digital, it's not tangible, you can't touch it, it's, it's online. It's a file, if you will, it's digital currency. Cryptocurrency is the term that we use for this digital money. Bitcoin is one type of cryptocurrency. There are a bunch of other cryptocurrencies out there. Bitcoin is just the mac daddy of them all. It was the first and it's the biggest and most valued right now. Blockchain is the technology that I will not even begin to try to describe behind how cryptocurrencies work. And that's the most you're gonna get from me as far as Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. That's not what this video is about. What I'm talking about today is the psychology in involving ourselves with finances, with trading, with money, with investing. There's some psychology that's universally applied to money or investing that I think is really bubbling up now. We can see when it comes to Bitcoin and people's involvement, specifically people who have no understanding of the market, of trading, of finances, of investing, any of that, and just jumping in and jumping on board. And we see this socially and publicly and, and and we just there's this craze that is kind of making the news and social media taking it by storm i want to talk about what's behind that and some specific psychological concepts that are behind that so you can be aware of your own and also see what's going on with others and understand why we do what we do as far as these psychological concepts are concerned i'm going to touch on them and just try to introduce you to them you can take the concepts and then research them further yourselves i want to introduce you to them though so you have a good idea of what they are general idea of what they are so you can really catch on to them or maybe look into them a little bit more if you are interested also want to say if cryptocurrency is your interest and finance is your interest and you just happen to land on this video because of the thumbnail and said bitcoin i'm going to ask you to watch the whole video and if you enjoy this video and this concept and these topics here i talk about as far as psychology and how it relates to what you're interested in consider subscribing for more helpful videos just like this one in other areas of your life all right let's get into them first and foremost if we're going to talk about the psychology behind any kind of trading or finances or money in general especially investing we got to talk about the psychology of hope and fear and here it is when you look at the essence of these two emotions let's look at hope for a second hope often comes into play when we're invested in the market and we have money invested in the market and we're losing money or we're losing out or we're on the losing end or the short end of an investment we stick with hope that it'll turn that things will turn around and that things will catch on and that our money will will eventually make money or, or things will turn around we're hoping that things will turn around and we hold on to something that's losing a little bit too long and that's dangerous because it's not objective fear on the other hand does the opposite oftentimes when we're successful and we're making money and we're gaining money and we see that our our, our money is is growing oftentimes especially if we're trading we tend to be fearful that we're going to lose and we get out too soon so we have to look at the relationship between those two things. If you're losing out on an investment or a trade, don't hang on to hope so long that you lose more money thinking it's gonna turn around. And if you're making money or you're gaining money, hold on a little longer than you normally would and don't act off or, or make it be impulsive off of the fear of losing that money or, or getting out before it dips again. Try to be patient in both circumstances. So looking at relationship between hope and fear is very important as well and the role that those emotions are playing in your decision making. As you'll probably hear me say again, we want to be as, as least, as least, as least, want to be as least emotional as possible. I hope that makes sense. Bruh. 
In all seriousness, we don't want to let emotions dictate our decisions. There is no place for weak or emotional people in the market. That doesn't matter if you're trading with cryptocurrency or the stock market. Regardless, if we're dealing with money, emotions really need to take a back seat. Another behavioral phenomenon is FOMO or fear of missing out. Now that's not a technical term, psychologically speaking, but what happens here is in fear of missing out on something great or something grand or something beneficial or prosperous, we jump in and we get involved, oftentimes uninformed, and we jump into something really impulsively. And oftentimes we do this because of the people around us and what they're doing and we see them gaining or we hear about them talking about something and we jump in so that we don't miss out. This is a mistake as well. Now Bitcoin is unique because this is somewhat the beginning of this new wave of technology and how it's going to really revolutionize uh, cryptocurrency at least. So there is some urgency to get involved. However, anytime you get involved, you wanna make sure you get involved intelligently and you don't jump into something and you're not impulsive. And with the way social media is taking off with Bitcoin now, it's really easy to look at what's around you, read what you see, listen to people talk and say, I wanna get involved and just blindly jump in and get involved on an impulsive kind of whim not the way to do it do a little bit of research find out what you need to know that you're comfortable with talk to the people that you're talking to as far as what they've done and how they've done it and then use your own judgment but this fear of missing out can really drive you crazy and cause you to do something instinct impulsively that isn't a good look now fomo can partially be explained by something called loss aversion which i'll get into more in a minute specifically but in terms of fear of missing out loss aversion is where we don't want to lose something so we'll take action to avoid losing it and so if we're under the perception or we perceive that we're going to lose out on something that everybody else is gaining we might take action to get involved so that we don't miss out or lose out because again we have an aversion to losing something else that can help explain this fear of missing out or this social media kind of craze as far as bitcoin is concerned and how it's kind of caught on like wildfire is it's called social contagion and also conformity both of these are social psychology kind of terms that apply to how and why we do what we do but just to give you an example of social contagion you can look that up social contagion is something like these challenges that we see on the internet and on social media where they just kind of one person does a challenge and someone else sees it and the next thing you know everybody almost not me but everybody on social media is doing this same challenge and again, like wildfire just catches on. So social contagion is interesting because we can kind of we, we, we kind of follow or copy what we see um, that's going on around us and, uh, to a certain extent. And conformity also speaks to why we change our behavior to conform or how and what we do to change our behavior to conform with what other people are doing. So if everybody's getting involved in cryptocurrency, that seems like the thing to do. And they're gaining at the same time and they're winning or making money or possibly going to make money winning perceivably making money or, or earning money or winning money and that's what we tell ourselves or what someone says they're gonna want to jump in so they don't miss out but also because everybody else is doing it and this is a big influence that social media can have on us and our decision making as well so we have to caution ourselves with that way of processing information third is the superiority trap now this is a psychological or a behavioral phenomenon that leads people to believe that they have a superior skill of some sort in a certain area or another and the danger here is that when you think that you're good or better or the best at doing something, you're going to have the blinders on as far as what else you could do, what you could do besides what you're doing or listening to advice. And so the caution here is kind of always remember this one thing, which is I can always learn more. Even if you think you have the hang of something, always be open minded to hear something else. Otherwise you think, well, I got it down pat. I read this article. I talked to this person. I've made so much money. I got it. I'm an expert. And you kind of get tunnel vision. That's dangerous. But a lot of us jump in, especially things that we're not really good at or we don't really know about. And we get the hang of them really quickly. And all of a sudden we think we're an expert. That's dangerous. So be mindful of the superiority trap as well. The fourth concept is called anchoring or focalism. Now, this is a cognitive bias that refers to our over-reliance on our original thought or our original belief about something. For example, with cryptocurrency, if you have the belief or the idea that a certain coin has a certain value and it's going to grow exponentially to reach a certain value over an extended period of time, if that's your belief and that's your idea and you get locked into that and you believe that this coin is absolutely going to grow, you may be blinded to some of the signs or some of the information or facts out there that really could steer you otherwise. And you get locked in and anchored to that original thought, which is this is the one, it's gonna do great things for me and I'm gonna focus on what I know originally or what I knew initially about this coin and what I thought initially about this coin. There, you're not looking at reality or what's right in front of you. Or you're not even considering it actually. You're so fixated on what you think is gonna happen and what you originally thought was, was where it was gonna go rather than where it's actually going. So once again, dangerous 
narrow-minded, locked in, be careful with that as well. Now the fifth concept I'm gonna talk about is one you may have already heard about, and it's called the gambler's fallacy. So the gambler's fallacy has to do with expected outcomes based on probability. Let me give you a demonstration to really put this into play and, and, and simplify this for you. If I take this Bitcoin here and I flip this Bitcoin, there's no such thing as a Bitcoin, this is a quarter. Remember, Bitcoin is not a tangible physical currency. It's just a digital file, it's a quarter. If I take this quarter and I flip this quarter five times, and each time I flip the quarter, it lands on heads, what are the odds that it lands on tails on the sixth flip? The odds are the same, but we have a tendency to expect the opposite of what's happened already. Another example of the gambler's fallacy relates to gambling and a casino. And let's just take roulette for instance. If you've ever played roulette, if you've never played roulette, what are you doing with your life? Roulette is amazing, super fun game, check it out. If you played roulette before, you know you can bet on black or red. Now, if you walk up to the table and you're like me, and we can do this with numbers as well, it shows the numbers that already showed up. We do this as humans and we judge and we base what our decision's gonna be and where we're gonna gamble, oftentimes based on what's already happened previously. The point is, that's exactly what the gambler's fallacy is, this notion that because it's fallen on X or certain number a certain number of times, or because it's landed on black a certain number of times, it's bound to be red here soon after. That's not how it works. Remember, the coin, the color on the table, they have no memory, no emotions. It's random chance. Now, how does this relate to the market or cryptocurrency if you're trading and you're involved? Well, market swings. If you look at a market swing one way or a trend, if you will, you just think that, well, it's trend down for so long, it's gotta bounce back up. No, the market has no memory as far as what it's already done. And what it's already done, unless you see some sort of pattern and the pattern is there for a reason and you've done your research and, you, and you've seen it and, and you know why it's moving different times of day or different news cycles, whatever it is, then maybe you found something, but don't just look at, cause it goes one way, it's gonna come back the other way just because it went one way. That's not how it works. Also, if this works with wins and losses in the market. If you have a position and you, place a, 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 a trade and you, you lose on that trade and you place another trade, you lose again and you lose three or four, lose money on three or four trades in a row, you may start to think, well, this next one's gotta hit because I've lost X amount of times in a row. Once again, that's irrelevant. Past results do not predict future occurrences in terms of probability or odds. What's already happened is not gonna dictate what's about to happen. As I said earlier, if you're not already subscribed, I'd love it if you do so. Come on, join the team and look out for more videos similar to this one. This one's really about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and investing and trading. And hopefully you got some concepts that are beneficial to you and help you understand your own behavior and possibly other people's behavior as well. And these are psychological concepts that are rooted in the science, in the field of psychology. So if you benefited from it and you really did enjoy it, please leave me a comment, let me know about it. Give me a thumbs up. And as I said before, love it if you subscribed check out my channel, look out for more videos to come in the future. Until the next video, happy trading, happy investing, take care.